Hey guys, welcome back to DPage TV. I am DPage. In today's video, I'm going to react to is the Indie Wrestling Degenerates by the channel Top 10 Wrestling. Uh, before we begin today's video, go ahead and hit that like button. Definitely comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe for more of my content. And without further ado, let's get into the video. There are so many wrestlers in the world today, and the majority of these wrestlers remain unsigned for their entire careers. Most PWG. of them don't make it, or desire to make it to a company like WWE or AEW, and live out their entire wrestling career on the independent scene. And of course, within the indie wrestling scene are a few bad eggs. Wrestlers who have gained distinct reputations after finding themselves in controversy. Today, we're going to discuss a few of those stories. Forgot, Make sure to subscribe uh, to the channel right this second because I know the majority shit, of you watching aren't already. A and let's get wrestler. into the video. Michael Elgin, there we go. On June 22nd, 2014, wrestler Michael Elgin became the Ring of Honor World Champion, beating Adam Cole for the title at Best in the World. It was perhaps the biggest championship win of Elgin's entire career and a 10 year career up until that point. And up until that point, Elgin had been a stalwart of the independent scene, having wrestled and had been very successful in many companies, including but not limited to CZW, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, IWA Mid-South, and he also wrestled for other companies in other countries, such as DDT in Japan. Elgin would hold the Ring of Honor title until September of that year, losing it to Jay Briscoe. But even though he mm, lost it, Michael Elgin was now in the best years of his career. And after an already solid 10 plus year career, Elgin was hitting the glory years now. He was one of the best unsigned wrestlers out there. And through Ring of Honor's working relationship with New Japan, Elgin would begin working there too and start getting really popular in New Japan Pro Wrestling. With it being reported in February 2016 that he had officially signed for the company, for two years. At Invasion Attack in April 2016, Elgin won his first title in New Japan when he, Tanahashi, and Yoshitatsu won the never open weight six man tag titles, defeating the Elite. They would lose the titles back to the Elite less than a month later, but soon after that, Elgin would defeat Kenny Omega to win the IWGP Intercontinental title, his first wow. singles title win in New Japan and perhaps one of the biggest wins of his career. He lost the title three months later and would have various title shots and programs in the company for the next year. At the end of 2017, Elgin began teaming with Jeff Cobb in the Global Tag League, but behind the scenes, a lot was going on. In December 2017, a woman accused one of Michael Elgin's trainees of sexually assaulting her, with the woman sharing multiple screenshots of DMs between herself and Elgin, accusing him of mishandling the allegations and ignoring them, doing nothing about it. Screenshots were also released showing him making disparaging remarks about his tag team partner, Jeff Cobb. Mm. Following these allegations, Elgin was pulled from many indie dates, and while New Japan kept him around and kept... I made some comments about Jeff Cobb that were unacceptable at the time of this conversation. I had a lot going on. I took it out on Jeff Cobb unfairly. Not only is he a great performer, he's one of the nicest and most kind-hearted people I've ever met in my career. I spoke to him and other colleagues directly and hope they accept my apology. He deserves for praise, praise performance, and he is a true asset to any company he is involved in. I truly hope he becomes a big part of New Japan this year. Wow. Man him teaming with Jeff Cobb, that must have been very awkward. His run in New Japan was just really awkward. He would win the Never Openweight title in 2018, to the shock of many fans, but at this point, no one really wanted to see him in New Japan, and in 2019, he was let go of the company. He was signed by Impact though that same year, which was seen as a really weird move by them. He didn't really do much in Impact, and during the Speaking Out movement in 2020, the allegations against Michael Elgin would resurface, as well as new allegations of him sending explicit photos to a woman were surfacing too. He was suspended indefinitely and eventually fired, fired by Impact yeah. as a result. But once again, in 2022, after two years of inactivity, a company randomly decided to sign Michael Elgin again, with Elgin making appearances for Pro Wrestling Noah and winning the GHC tag titles. However, two months later, he was stripped of the title and removed from future Noah shows due to his run-ins with the Japanese law. The crimes he committed, you ask? 
shoplifting protein powder. Wow. G Raver began his career in 2007 in CZW, being really thrown right into the deep end, debuting for CZW. However, that match would only be the one match, and it would only be a couple years after that he would come back to CZW, but first he would go over the next few years wrestling for various promotions across the independent scene in America. He won many titles and really established himself as being a deathmatch wrestler. But G Raven never really got his big break, and it was the rise of GCW which was very beneficial to him, like it was very beneficial to other deathmatch wrestlers who are now getting a lot more regular bookings for a better production company like GCW and probably getting paid better, I imagine. Because Carney deathmatch promoters are still very much out there. Yeah. He made his first appearances for GCW in 2016, which would also be the same year he would return to CZW, which would signify that he's done pretty well between the time he initially debuted there and now, showing that he's done well to get back there. And 2016 to 2020 would also end up being the most busy years of his career, and easily the prime of his career. He won the GCW Tag Team Championship in July of 2021 with Jimmy Lloyd. He only held it for a week, but this was significant because it showed how G-Raver had done pretty alright for himself on the indie scene, all things considered. He never got his big break from a bigger company, but he pretty much reached a good height that he can reach for an independent wrestler, you know, a champion for GCW who one of the higher indie companies. But as quick as he rose, the harder he fell. On the 2nd of March 2022, a woman accused G-Raver of... My deepest apologies to anyone let down by not coming out this earlier. I'm sorry to anyone who has been affected by this psycho. No more vague posts. In 2020, G. Raver physically attacked me by repeatedly punching me in the face and head, which led to a series of seizures. I'm epile shit. epileptic and a very swollen face. This man is dangerous, manipulative, and a drug addict. He's a danger to everyone he counters that should be in this community anymore. For everyone who knew but turned a hair because he used to be a good wrestler, eat shit. Stop protecting lunatics. Whoa. Physically assaulting her. And a couple months later, she would post some screenshots between her and G-Raver, showing some pretty damning screenshots and some pretty uncomfortable screenshots to read. In her initial statement, she also... For everyone who's told me how sorry he was, how bad he felt, or how nice to you he was, it's all performance art. He's very, very scum. I'm so sick of hit, being harassed by a man who already has physically attacked me. Wow. Oof. mentioned the following this man is dangerous manipulative and a drug addict he's a danger to every woman he encounters and shouldn't be in this community anymore and there's some undeniable weight to that statement given that months later g raver was busted by the cops for drug possession in fact wow. here's a list of everything he was charged with manufacture delivery or possession with a intent to manufacture or deliver obviously for drugs violation of hazard regulation use slash possession of drug paraphernalia Intentional possession of a controlled substance by a person not registered, possession of marijuana, small personal use, driving under the influence of alcohol or a controlled substance, failure to keep right, failure to use safety belt, driver and front seat occupant, and careless driving. It has now been over a year since G-Raver last wrestled, and I'd be surprised if we ever saw him in the ring again. Probably never. Yeah, this dude, Data Star. In February 2012, David Starr would make his wrestling debut for World Extreme Wrestling in Germany. And it was his first match in a career that would see him wrestle all over the world in various independent promotions. David Starr being from Philadelphia would find himself wrestling on the American independent scene for various promotions such as CZW, Ring of Honor, GCW and much much more. Where I was first introduced to David Starr was throughout his time in Europe and the British wrestling scene. He won titles in RevPro, Progress, TNT, he was even the last ever defiant wrestling world champion, the promotion formerly known as What Culture Pro Wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, and like I, I said, David Starr was really just wrestling everywhere, he was a big name in the American independent scenes wrestled in pretty much every company there, the same with Europe, 
Britain, he wrestled all over the world, truly. Perhaps what he was most known for during his time as a wrestler, though, was his stance on unionization. David Starr was very vocally pro union, and in 2019, he collaborated with Equity to form We the Independent, which was an organization which was formed to help raise funds for wrestlers to unionize. We the Independent is something that caused a bit of divide within the wrestling community because David Starr was very vocal about the fact he wanted to remain unsigned and remain on the independent scene and remain wrestling there. However, that is something that wouldn't last for much longer. On June 17, 2020, David Starr was accused of sexual abuse by a former girlfriend of his. After the allegation came out, many promotions would cut ties with David Starr, and not just wrestling promotions either, We The Independent would also sever ties with David Starr following the allegations. David Starr would deny the allegations, but it was these allegations against David Starr that would kick off and start the Speaking Out movement. Mm -hmm. A movement within the wrestling community that saw many wrestlers exposed for abuse. Since these allegations came out, David Starr has not been involved in wrestling. He has not wrestled a single match, and the social media accounts and the website for We The Independent have been abandoned. Wow. Oh. Earlier this year. Okay. We'll check out this video next time. But yeah, wow. Uh that one from G Raver, really, that's pretty much pretty pretty messed up, dude. Oh man, but um I don't know what I just wanted to say to this because it's not gonna be very, very lighthearted after watching this video, so yeah, I guess the only thing I gotta tell you guys is um, it'll be wrong for me to like end this with subscribe to more of my content and peace out. So hopefully uh, everybody who's watching this, I hope you guys are taking care of yourselves. I hope everybody's okay out there. And until next time, until my next video, I hope everybody is being safe. I know this world is very, very crazy at times. So be safe, be well, and I'll see you guys next time.